hello dear students in this session let us discuss solving the system of equation using matrix method but the equation is non homogeneous differential equation okay in this topic we have a theorem the theorem statement says that if phi of t is a fundamental matrix okay of d x of t by d t is equal to a into x of t then show that phi p of t is equal to phi of t within the integral that is integration from t not to t into phi inverse of u f of u du where your t not belongs to the interval a comma b is a particular solution of your non homogeneous differential equation so this phi of t is a general solution you will get a general solution right in that general solution if you write the general solution in a matrix form then we will call that as a phi of t which is a fundamental matrix this phi p of t is nothing but your particular solution of the non homogeneous differential equation okay even while uh, solving differential equations non homogeneous differential equations we were finding particular integral as well as complementary function so complement while finding the solution for your complementary function we were not considering the particular integral part right similarly we will do in the matrix form so first let us try to prove this theorem then we will solve problem on this so to prove this theorem first what i will do is i will consider a homogeneous differential equation okay my homogeneous differential equation is dx by dt is equal to a into x of t call this as equation number 1 if you solve this equation the general solution of this equation will be x of t is equal to some constant c into function phi of t right this phi of t is nothing but your fundamental matrix and i will call this equation as equation number 2 now let us consider the non homogeneous differential equation that is dx of t by dt is equal to a into x of t plus f of t call this as equation number 3 before solving this equation i will just modify your equation number 2 that is since this is a constant i will treat this constant is also a function of t okay so i can write x of t as c of t into phi of t and i will call this as equation number 4 now using equation number 4 in equation number 3 equation number 3 reduces to this is x of t so if i want dx of t by dt i will get c of t into phi prime of t plus phi of t into x prime of t right i am just differentiating your equation number 4 first what i have done i have just considered the homogeneous differential equation for that the solution general solution will be in this form so since it is a constant i will just make this constant as a function of t itself so this equation modified to this form now using equation 4 i am just reducing my equation number 3 i have x of t i am finding what is dx of t by dt now substitute this value and x of t in your equation number 3 so i will get c of t into phi prime of t is equal to a into c of t phi of t plus f of t right so now we know that x of t is equal to c into phi of t and dx of t by dt is equal to a into x of t 
सो फाइव प्राइम ऑफ t इज नथिंग बट d फाइव ऑफ t बाई डी टी राइट सो इफ डी एक्स ऑफ टी बाई डी टी इज ए इंटू एक्स ऑफ टी देन ऑब्वियसली डी फाइव बाई डी टी इज इक्वल टू ए इंटू फाइव ऑफ टी सब्सिट्यूट दिस वैल्यू हियर सो दिस इक्वेशन बिकम्स सी ऑफ टी इंटू ए इंटू फाइव ऑफ टी प्लस ओके आई जस्ट लेफ्ट आउट वन पार्ट हियर दैट इज फाइव ऑफ टी इंटू एक्स प्राइम ऑफ टी प्लस फाइव ऑफ टी इंटू एक्स प्राइम ऑफ टी इज इक्वल टू ए इंटू फाइव ऑफ टी सी ऑफ टी प्लस एफ ऑफ टी सो ए इंटू फाइव ऑफ टी सी ऑफ टी ए इंटू फाइव ऑफ टी सी ऑफ टी गेट्स कैंसल वी विल गेट फाइव ऑफ टी इंटू एक्स प्राइम ऑफ टी दिस इज सी ओ सी प्राइम सॉरी दिस इज सी प्राइम ऑफ टी वी आर डिफ्रेंशिएटिंग दिस राइट जस्ट मेक अ चेंज सी प्राइम ऑफ टी इज इक्वल टू एफ ऑफ टी सो वॉट आई हैव Um, I just obtained phi of t into c prime of t is equal to f of t. I will call this as equation number five. Okay. So now phi of t is a fundamental matrix. So this is not equal to zero. In other words, we can say that we know that fundamental matrix obtained when we have a linearly independent set that means ronskin of phi of t is not equal to 0 right so i can write this as if your matrix is not equal to 0 means there exist inverse of phi of t right we are getting inverse of phi of t means i can multiply phi inverse of t to this equation so i will multiply phi inverse of t on both sides of equation number 5 so i will get phi inverse of t into phi of t c dash of t is equal to phi inverse of t into f of t So phi inverse of t into phi of t is is nothing but one. So we will get c dash of t is equal to phi inverse of t into f of t. I will just repeat the steps. Just go through it once again. So till here we have no doubt. We have just mo modified equation number two here. That is x of t is equal to c of t into phi of t. I need dx of t by dt. For that, I have just differentiated your equation number four. If I differentiate equation number four, I will get c of t phi dash of t plus phi of t into c dash of t. Just substitute this value here. Will be equal to a into c of t into phi of t plus f of t. From equation number one, I can write d phi by d t is equal to a into phi of t. substitute c of t as it is in the place of phi dash of t a into phi of t plus phi of t into c dash of t as it is which is equal to to your rhs part so this a into phi of t c c of t gets cancel with your first term of the lhs part so you will get phi of t into c dash of t is equal to f of t since phi of t is a fundamental matrix fundamental matrix means wrong scan of phi of t is not equal to 0 so matrix is not equal to 0 means there exist inverse of that matrix right so since there exist inverse of phi of t i can multiply phi inverse of t on both side of this equation number 5 here i have just multiplied phi inverse of t on both sides so we know that a inverse into a is equal to i in the same procedure phi inverse of t into phi of t is i i into c dash of t is c dash of t itself will be equal to phi inverse of t into f of t now integrate this function with respect to t 
or with respect to u you can change the variable since our limits are constant right so i can write this as if i integrate c dash of t with respect to t i will get c of t itself this is equal to integral t naught to t phi inverse of u f of u into du plus some constant say c naught i will call this as equation number 6 okay so now this c naught is some arbitrary constant arbitrary constant so now the general solution of non homogeneous equation can be written as x of t this will be equal to phi of t into integral t naught to t phi inverse of u f of u into du plus c naught right so i can write this as phi of t integral t naught to t phi inverse of u into f of u du plus c naught into phi of t so now i will divide this as phi p of t plus x l of t this is nothing but particular solution this is just a just like a complementary function okay so x of t is equal to phi p of t plus x l of t where phi p of t is equal to phi of t integral t naught to t phi inverse of u f of u into du this is what i suppose to prove right phi p of t is equal to phi of t integral t naught to t phi inverse of u into f of u du so this is all about this theorem now using this theorem let's solve problem which are non-homogeneous differential equations okay this is the problem dx of t by dt is equal to 6 minus 3 2 1 into x of t plus e power phi t by 4 so first what i have to do i should consider the homogeneous part and i should solve and find the solution for the homogeneous part which is similar to the problem which we had already solved in the previous session let us recall those things by solving this problem so first what i will do i will write the characteristic equation that is nothing but a determinant a minus lambda i is equal to 0 so i will get 6 minus lambda minus 3 2 1 minus lambda which is equal to 0 so this is nothing but 6 minus lambda into 1 minus lambda plus 6 is equal to 0 just solve this equation you will get lambda square minus 7 lambda plus 12 is equal to 0 if you find the roots for this you will get lambda is equal to 3 comma 4 so i have two eigenvalues lambda 1 is equal to 3 and lambda 2 is equal to 4 now using these two lambda values i have to find out the eigenvectors right so how to find out the eigenvectors for lambda is equal to 3 i can write in matrix form 3 minus 3 2 minus 2 into k1 k2 is equal to 0 0 so this is nothing but 3k1 minus 3k2 is equal to 0 2k1 minus 2k2 is equal to 0 again you will get a singular system here that is you will get infinitely many solutions for that what i will do i will just choose some value to my k1 say 1 so if k1 is equal to 1 you will get 3 is equal to 3 k2 this implies k2 is also 1 therefore i can write this as k1 k2 is equal to 
1 comma 1. So, x1 will be equal to 1 1 into e power 3t. Right? Similarly, let us find out x2. So, that is for lambda is equal to 4. So, if lambda is equal to 4, your matrix will be 2 minus 3, 2 minus 3 into k1, k2 is equal to 0, 0. Write this in an equation form. That is 2k1 minus 3k2 is equal to 0. 2k1 minus 3k2 is equal to 0. Again, you will get a infinitely many solutions. So, for that, I will choose values to my k1 and k2. So, choose k1 is equal to 3. If k1 is equal to 3, you will get 6 minus 3 k2 is equal to 0. This is nothing but k2 is equal to 2. So, k1 k2 is equal to 3 and 2. Therefore, you can write x2 of t as 3, 2 into e power 40. So, now the general solution will be given as x of t is equal to c1 into e power 3t e power 3t plus c2 into 3 e power 40 2 e power 40 right so now i have to find out phi p of t from this so the fundamental matrix is given by fundamental matrix is nothing but in your general solution if you write the general solution in a matrix form that is nothing but your fundamental matrix so phi of t will be equal to e power 3 t 3 e power 40 e power 3 t 2 e power 40 so according to our derivation i should find out phi inverse of t also because i have phi inverse of u right for that i have to find out phi inverse of t how to find out inverse matrix so phi inverse of t is equal to adjoint of phi of t divided by determinant of phi of t i will write phi inverse of t directly you just check with the answer okay so this is nothing but phi inverse of t so in the integral sign we have a limit from t naught to t since they have not mentioned the initial point i will choose t naught is equal to 0 okay so now consider integral t naught to t phi inverse of u f of u into du so i know what is phi inverse of t if i replace t by u i will get phi inverse of u f of u is nothing but this part of the question okay so now let's substitute the values integral from 0 to t minus 2 e power minus 3 u 3 into e power minus 3 u e power minus 4 u into e power minus 4 u is multiplied with e power 5 u 4 into du so multiply the terms you will get integral 0 to t so you will get this if you multiply this in your notes i have made a mistake here just make a correction over there and also i guess i have left out this minus sign in your notes just check with this so now i have to integrate this whole part with respect to u so you will get if i integrate this minus 2 e power minus 2 u by 2 minus 2 within the limit 0 to t plus 
ट्वेल इंटू इ पवर माइनस थ्री यू बै माइनस थ्री विथिन द लिमिट जीरो टू टी सिमिलर्ली पवर यू विथिन द लिमिट जीरो टू टी माइनस फोर इंटू इ पवर माइनस फोर यू डिवेड बै माइनस फोर विथिन द लिमिट जीरो टू टी सो अल्लाइ द लिमिट्स एंड साव दिस पार्ट यू विल गेट माइनस इ पवर टू टी माइनस फोर इ पवर माइनस थ्री टी प्लस थ्री इ पवर टी प्लस इ पवर माइनस फोर टी माइनस टू सो नाउ आई हेव टू फाइंड आउट फाइव पी ऑफ टी सो फॉर दैट फाइव ऑफ टी इंटू दिस टर्म राइट दिस इज इंटू माइनस इ पवर टू टी माइनस फोर इंटू इ पवर माइनस थ्री टी प्लस थ्री इ पवर टी प्लस फोर प्लस इ पवर माइनस फोर टी माइनस टू सो वॉट इज फाइव ऑफ टी फाइव ऑफ टी इज नथिंग बट इ पवर थ्री टी थ्री इंटू इ पवर फोर टी इ पवर थ्री टी टू इंटू इ पवर फोर टी आई शुड मल्टीप्लाई दिस विथ माइनस इ पवर टू टी माइनस फोर इ पवर माइनस थ्री टी प्लस थ्री इ पवर टी प्लस इ पवर माइनस फोर टी माइनस टू सो इफ यू मल्टीप्लाई ऑल दीज थिंग्स यू विल गेट फाइनली टू इ पवर फाइव टी माइनस सिक्स इ पवर फोर टी प्लस थ्री इ पवर थ्री टी माइनस वन इ पवर फाइव टी प्लस थ्री इ पवर थ्री टी माइनस फोर इ पवर फोर टी माइनस टू सो दिस इज द फाइनल सल्यूशन ऑफ योर नॉन होमोजीनियस सिस्टम ऑफ इक्वेशन ओके द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज अटोनोमस सिस्टम सो इन ऑर्डर टू डिफाइन द अटोनोमस सिस्टम I will consider first order differential equation of the form dx by dt is equal to f of x comma y, dy by dt is equal to g of x comma y. Call this as equation number one. Okay. So here f and g are continuous and have continuous first order partial derivatives since your f is a function of x and y obviously we will get a partial differential equation right this is continuous and have continuous first order partial derivatives so the region that means if i consider this as one of the region in this region if the function f and g or differentiable means we call this region as face plane or i can say that i will just consider x y plane in this plane if both f and g are differentiable then this plane is called as face plane okay so now equation 1 is called as autonomous equation or autonomous function if the function f and g are if these two functions are independent of independent variable so you should not have independent variable in your rhs part of the equation for example dx by dt is equal to x minus 2y so this is f of x comma y right this f of x comma y is independent of your independent variable 
that means f is autonomous equation similarly dy by dt is equal to x plus y this is independent of your independent variable so this equation is called as autonomous equation so if dx by dt is equal to x minus 2y plus t then this equation is non autonomous equation okay so now if i consider a point say x not comma y not this point is called as critical point of your equation 1 that is standard equation dx by dt is equal to f of x comma y and dy by dt is equal to g of x comma y if this is a critical point of the system 1 or equation 1 if both f of x not comma y not is equal to 0 and g of x not comma y not is equal to 0 that means in the place of x not and y not if i consider x not as 1 and y not as 2 in your differential equation that is in your autonomous equation if both f of x not comma y not and g of x not comma y not is equal to 0 at this point then you can call this point as a critical point okay for example let us consider dx by dt is equal to 4x minus y for your understanding i'm just consider f of x comma y okay so now at 1 comma 2 what will happen okay i will consider this as 2y at 1 comma 2 what will happen to your f of x comma y you will get 4 minus 4 this is equal to 0 so i can say that 1 comma 2 is a critical point of this equation okay is that clear so this is called as critical point this critical points satisfies your equation right so i can write that x of t is equal to x naught and y of t is equal to y naught that means this is the equilibrium solution of your equation 1 in terms of solution we will call this as a equilibrium solution to this equation in terms of critical point i will call this as stationary point or equilibrium point okay so now using this concept let's solve one or two problems so first problem is x dash is equal to minus x plus y and y dash is equal to x minus y this is the given system of equations i have to find the critical point for this equation okay so first what i should do this is my f of x comma y this is my g of x comma y i have to consider f of x comma y is equal to 0 and g of x comma y is equal to 0 that means minus x plus y is equal to 0 x minus y is equal to 0 this implies x is equal to y that means if i choose any value to x y keeps on changing so this is nothing but singular system or other in other words i can say that there exist infinitely many solutions that means for this particular problem there exist infinitely many critical points okay so let's see one more problem so we have dx by dt is equal to x square plus y square minus 6 dy by dt is equal to x square minus y solve these two first what you will do you will consider f of x comma y is equal to 0 and g of x comma y is equal to 0 so this equation becomes x square plus y square minus 6 is equal to 0 
x square minus y is equal to 0. Using this equation, I can write x square as y square minus y square plus 6 minus y is equal to 0. This is nothing but y square plus y minus 6 is equal to 0. If you find the roots for this, you will get y is equal to minus 3 and 2. So now for these two values, I will get different x values, right? If y is equal to minus 3, I will get x square as x square is equal to minus 3. x will become plus or minus i into 3. So if you get imaginary values, you will not consider that point as a critical point. So let's find out for y is equal to 2. So when y is equal to 2, we will get x square minus 2 is equal to 0. x square is equal to 2. So x is equal to plus or minus root 2. Right? So now the critical points are root 2 comma 2 and root 2 minus root 2 comma 2. These two are the critical points. So let's discuss some more topics in the next session. Thank you.